Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. So today it's another traditional piece, and we are doing, well, something I kind of made up on the spot. I didn't, I usually have this list of ideas that I wanted to draw, but for this particular piece, I just let my hand do what it wanted to do. So we are working on the Fabriano Aquarello Watercolor Pad. It's 100% cotton, artistical, uh, it's the artistical line. It's 100% cotton and it's hot pressed, so there's almost no texture on it, and it makes it really nice for like blending and you know just really smooth looking works. And with this particular piece, I decided to challenge myself a little bit by using materials that I am somewhat intimidated by. So we're using the Derwent Ink Tense pencils today. This is the set of 24 pencils. And I got these when I was very, very young. Well, not really very young. I got these in high school. So maybe around, hmm, maybe 13 or 14 years old. And I didn't really have much experience with art. Or I've been drawing my entire life, but I wasn't really uh, exposed to different mediums. At that time, I was just using like the normal colored pencils, the uh, Faber-Castell classics. And then I was using a tablet here and there. Uh, I wasn't even that good at watercolor yet, so I was very limited in terms of mediums that I could work with. And these ink tense pencils are pretty much water soluble pencils, but their pigment isn't watercolor. As the name suggests, they're ink, hence ink tense. So, as you can see here, it's a little bit soft and faded when you lay them down as pencils, but once you activate them with water, they become super vibrant and pigmented and 13 to 14 year old me was very much intimidated by that. And I did try to learn how to use them, but I guess I was a bit too young and I really didn't know how to deal with it. I, mean, I kind of sucked with watercolor back then, much more watercolor pencils. So I stored them away for a while, just kept them here in my shelf as part of my little art material collection, but I only would use them when I was feeling adventurous, but I never really pushed the boundaries with them. So years and years pass, and now I'm a bit more experienced in, the, in terms of techniques, but the level, like the feeling of intimidation is still there. So I wanted to push myself, and I decided to do an entire piece using only the Derwent ink tents and not my usual watercolor. So, as usual, I did encounter the same intimidation regarding it when I was younger. Um, when I lay it down, it's like super... It's not really faded, but it's not super pigmented, or it lays down beautifully, that's for sure, but the color isn't vibrant. But the moment you add the water, it just becomes like an explosion of color, so I had to adapt and adjust to that, so yeah. And now I also learned certain techniques like, oh, you can just like, you know, wet the tip of the pencil and use that like watercolor. So I did that as well. And I think I've gotten over the fear of it already. And while watercolor is still my favorite medium since with ink tents, I'm still, I'm still learning. I still don't know how to blend colors or yeah, because they die quickly because they're ink. So once they dry, they're set like that. So in order to mix colors, the technique so far that I've learned is to do it by layering, like what I'm doing right now. So instead of mixing the yellow and the dark, indi the deep indigo and the blue together from the start, I would lay down the color in layers. So it's like indigo and then blue and then yellow. So that's pretty much the technique I would employ for this entire piece. Also, there's the deal with the vibrancy, so I had to um, like learn, or I already know how to do it, but I had to utilize the technique of balancing out and toning down the color by using colors that are opposite to it on the color wheel. So, for example, with this yellow, I would use the blue of the background to sort of tone down the skin tone so that she's not like super yellowish. It's supposed to be like slightly skin tone, so it's by layering and padding on the colors to make it look like a cohesive piece. So that's what 
how, that's how I dealt with this. Another thing with colored pencils and watercolor pencils for that matter, I really don't have a lot of patience. Uh, it's a surprise I even managed to complete a really big piece with the polychromos, but I don't have the patience to like slowly color in section by section, so I had to deal with, it, with my impatience when I'm coloring in big areas like say the cloak or even the background. And then I also had to make sure that um, it wasn't too vibrant since, so like right now they're very vibrant, but as I mentioned earlier, I would be putting down the colors of the background to try to tie in everything together. So for this olive greenish cloak, I would be using the deep indigo of the background later to tone down and add depth and shadow to it. I think it's quite possible to do depths and shadows with just a single pencil color or to stay within the same family range, but um, this adds more cohesion to the piece. So needless to say, I'm, I had a lot of fun with this. I didn't fear the medium anymore, and I think I might be able to start using it a bit more often. Maybe even even com bleh, maybe even combine it with um, my usual medium, watercolor. So we'll see how that turns out. And hey, I might even be able to use this for October if I decide to join this year. If I have the time to join this year. <laughs> Oh gosh, I need to figure out my schedule. Phew. So yeah, um, it's a short, well, it's a quick piece, even though it did take me one week to finish because I started this on the weekend and then, well, I wasn't able to finish it on the weekend. So I would work on it like when I come home from work. So that's why, yeah. But it's a relatively quick piece since the paper is small. So yeah. So what else can I talk about? Um, the theme, uh, it only started developing somewhere when I started doing the background. I wanted to do like a dark forest silhouette type of thing. So I went with that dark, gloomy sort of feel. And then as for the colors, I just went with colors that would kind of complement each other but not make it... I wanted to go with like the dark gloomy feel, but I didn't want it to look too dark, so I used this like vibrant pink magenta maroonish color on the person itself so that there's some contrast and that it would draw the attention of the viewer to the girl. And yeah, I feel like I leveled up a little bit with this piece. Um, I'm a bit more open to trying out new mediums now. And yeah, it's a learning process. Actually, the other great thing about the Derwent Ink Pens is that they dry pretty fast. So, if I work on the hair, for example, and I water it down, and I work on like some tiny details for a little while, I could easily go back to the hair and add a new layer of pigment or paint or color to add the depths and shadows. So since it's ink, it won't really move anymore, and it dries really quickly. So I guess that's the upside of the ink medium. It's just that I'm really used to watercolors where it's very easy to reactivate and layer things and blend things together. So I needed to um, I needed to improve my brush strokes to make it look like the things would 
actually bent together when, in fact, they layered on top of each other. But yeah, aside from that, I had a lot of fun. It wasn't as intimidating as it was before. So we're nearing the end of the video. We will be jumping into the PV in a few seconds. And yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, and DeviantArt. Uh, please like and subscribe this video as well, or to me rather. And I'll see you around.